Would you look at that? That right there, as you see, Land Rover. That right there, LS. Technically an LM4, but we got our 5.3 GM engine sitting in our Discovery 2. Today is a good day. We accomplished getting that in there with the help of the ACE or alternative conversion engineering kit that utilizes the factory discovery transmission, which means we're gonna have traction control, ABS, all that good stuff, cluster and everything should function as it did before, just with a little more reliability and a touch more power, but not too much because we don't want to hurt that Land Rover transmission. So today we're yanking the 4.6 out of this Discovery. It had sleeves sliding, making a racket. No good, we don't need that. Decided to upgrade the power a little bit. This is part, if I can count, part three in our series. And we get the LS sitting in there. And we finally get to use this. What I want you to do though first is pause the video and comment down below what you think this banana yellow bracket is for in our swap. We got that four six sitting where it belongs, next to the dumpster. All right, so we got the transmission down here and the bracket goes on the back side. It grabs onto, it's kind of hard to see because it's got a transmission tunnel in the way. But the back side of the bracket grabs onto this little rib there. And when we remove a couple of these bolts, we'll flip those around and run them through those holes into the back side of a little pump housing and that will hold that front pump tight in place while we remove the bell housing. When we get to removing the bell housing we will have a PVC pipe up against the front cross member here to that front pump for extra support and you'll kind of see that process here in a minute. All right, so we got our bolts in on this little retainer bracket. It is a little tight, 17 millimeter stubby, gets it done. It used the backside of that one and that one there. So what we're gonna do now is rip out the majority of the bolts. We'll leave a couple in and get our pipe in place to hold it the rest of the way. And then we will slide the bell housing off. We got our PVC wedged in there up against the front pump. Um, so what we're gonna do is we got five bolts left in the bell housing. So we're gonna zip those out. Look at that, you like my watch tan line? But we're gonna zip those out. And then what we'll do is slide the bell housing back, then take some of the extra bolts with a little half inch spacer and zip those back in to the front pump to keep everything in place because we're going to have to remove this pipe to get the bell housing out and the new one in. So it'll be kind of a reverse operation at that point. Crawl back in here and try not to break anything. I feel like I need another hand. So this gives you a little better picture of what's going on 
we got our pipe up against the front pump and then we reinserted five of the bell housing bolts in with some nuts on it to make up the distance that the bell housing was. So those are holding it in place along with this yellow bracket. You can see that better now, what that is doing after I get everything out of the way. So now we can remove our pipe and get the new bell housing, that one, slid onto the pipe, pipe reinserted. We'll remove these guys and then bolt the bell housing in. And Bob's your uncle. So we got our new bell housing on the pipe. So we'll remove these five bolts again. Slide this guy in place, bolt it on, good to go. is in torque converter is now in place so our lm4 is still sitting on the engine stand we're going to pick it up with the forklift so we can do all the rear stuff that is necessary before we can slide it in there and bolt it up but first we got a little correction from the last video i made a mistake that never happens okay maybe it happens quite a bit but we're going to correct that mistake. On the power steering pump, I put a washer slash space. Yeah. I put a washer slash. I can't talk. I put a washer slash spacer in the incorrect position, and I was corrected on that by the maker of the kit last video. So I just want to make sure we are showing you the correct way. So we're going to rip the power steering pump off real quick. It's a little square washer. Let's put it on the wrong side of the bracket. So what I did in the last video is I had this square aluminum spacer behind the entire Land Rover bracket. I thought it was just a washer where in reality, it needs to be in between the pump and the bracket. So it needs to go here. So we're gonna correct that. I'll have to hammer this flat because I distorted it. But we'll hammer this flat, get this on the correct direction. All right, good as new. We got that all remedied. Let that be a lesson that even people who make a lot of mistakes can still make more mistakes. But we caught her, good to go. We're gonna bolt on the vehicle side, engine mounts with the rubbers, and then we'll pick this with the forklift, get the phone. So for the vehicle side and the mounts, we have four of these rubber, I guess that'd be your mount material, your isolator. There's four of those two per side and then we have some steel brackets one is labeled ps passenger side one is not labeled so being we have two sides i imagine passenger side driver side and these just slide onto those carriage bolts that we put on in last video And then they also come with a nut and bolt to mount them to the car. We're gonna leave these a little looser than that. We're gonna back them off a little bit. We're gonna leave these loose so they can slide, being there's some adjustability in the bracket. That way we can line it all up correctly. We'll get the other side done. seal 
is in, we already installed the extended dowels. These came with the kit, um, removed the factory ones and these ones are longer to make up the difference of this spacer. So that just slides on to those dowels and sits there. And now we make a lot of noise. Now we're gonna put the flex plate on. Then included in the kit is a spacer for that and an adapter for the snout of the torque converter. So on this adapter, you just have to make sure you have the larger diameter on the inner part towards the transmission side. And that just kind of slides in there like that. Now we're just going to torque down the flex plate bolts. That calls for 15 foot pounds, 37 foot pounds, and then finish it off with 74 pound feet, foot pounds, whatever it is. Now these are overkill for most people, but being we do this day to day, these are super nice to have. It's got like lights that pull up, it beeps, it vibrates. It makes torquing bolts a pleasurable experience. officially have an LS in our discovery. Isn't that swell looking? So transmission is all bolted up to the engine and everything is sitting nicely. We got a little tweaking to do on the mounts, but that will be in the next video. But for now, look at that, LS discovery. I think this is gonna solve most of the issues that Land Rover implanted in an 04 Discovery. The alternative conversion engineering kit is a pretty neat bit of kit, as they would say. The bell housing setup is kind of a neat deal. Got the center cut out of a GM one with the Land Rover bolt pattern welded in there and ACE or alternative conversion engineering did a nice job getting all the bits for that stuff lined up. Um, everything looks good sitting in here. We obviously have the hood up there. So I'm not quite sure that AC compressor looks fairly tall, but I'm sure it clears. We'll have some finagling to do with the AC lines. This one looks like it should line up pretty decent. This one's gonna take some doing, maybe some bending there. Ace has a decent instruction manual that you get access to once you purchase a kit. And maybe he has that in there further on and I just haven't read that far along yet. We'll get our belt on. We're gonna have some fun doing the exhaust and wiring. I think next video will be some of that. We might do the hard parts first. We gotta get some of our adapters in on the fuel lines and oil pressure, coolant temp, all that. And then we'll probably do the exhaust, tackle the exhaust, figure out intake routing, and then we get to tackle the wiring where we mesh Land Rover harness with our eBay T56 LS drive-by cable harness that we have. So we got a fresh harness that we got to chop apart. And uh, why don't you stick around and click on to one of the other videos on either the side of here and check out either more stuff or if you're watching this late enough, the next video in the series, we'll have this up at the end. And as always, subscribe for some more, give us a like. Appreciate you guys watching. Slide the bell housing back in, in this manner. <laughs>